In this video, we're going to use Algolia to do very powerful and fast search um, and synchronize it with Sendry.io data. And I'll be using my own side project as an example where we have recipes. If you want a text version of this video, of this tutorial, uh, go ahead and open the URL in the description. Here's how this is going to work. We're going to have some data changes that Sendry is going to pick up and fire off a webhook to our serverless function that will do some data massaging uh, to get exactly the data that we need into Algolia. Then finally, this is going to relate to Algolia's APIs, sending that data over to their server to be indexed and searchable by users. The first step for implementing that flow is thinking about our data. I like doing that with a graph query that I iterate over and over. Um, so in this case, we have recipes, which are the only document type that I'm going to index in my Algolia instance. You could have more. You could have multiple types in a single query or separate queries, what have you. Um, so in this case, the biggest uh, things that we need to pay attention to are the object ID, uh, that being the equivalent of underscore ID for a sanity document, which is a unique identifier that you use for uh, updating documents later on, you need that in Algolia. Uh, so say you change the title of a specific uh, recipe later on, you want to go in into Algolia and change that specific uh, object in the index instead of maybe deleting every object and uh, adding them again just because one of them changed. Um, the underscore type and underscore review hash they are mainly for future reference that we may need to implement, for example, a new recipe or a new document type or the review uh, is stale as compared to uh, Chosenity. Um, then we have uh, document specific properties like the title and the description, which are the main text fields that users are going to search for. Uh, duration, I could use that for uh, faceting, which is Algolia's way of categorizing. So say I only want those entries that have a duration uh, less than one hour, for example. So only quick recipes. Um, then the status is a admin only field that we assign for an approval flow. Um, and it can have four possible values being unapproved, not vegetarian, approved and pending review. Um, the reason why I have a status number is because I'm going to use this status for as a ranking factor inside of Algolia. And I need to transform that into a number before Algolia can uh, truly use that for ordering uh, results. So think about lemon pie and I have two lemon pies. One is approved, the other is pending review. As I'm giving a bigger, larger number for status number, in approved recipes, then the approved one is going to show up first. Um, then we have ingredients, uh, main image reference. Uh, so this is interesting because this is a Sendry hosted image. So instead of including the URL, I'm including the ID of the asset, which uh, I can use for getting all images sizes, all image sizes that I want, which is much more interesting than just a plain uh, URL. Then we have uh, categories and tags. So these are interesting because they are uh, references to other to other um, documents. And instead of only including the title, so I could search, for example, um, breakfast, and then show up every single recipe that includes the breakfast category. I'm also including the ID because then I can search for only documents that include this specific ID in the categories array, uh, which is much more robust than searching for the title because it could be that breakfast changes titles um, and then a specific recipe wasn't updated in Algolia in ages uh, when it its uh, category title is stale or different, so it wouldn't show up in the search. So that's why we, we do this. So we are expanding the reference and only picking the title and the ID. With this, I usually execute the query, uh, make sure the data is as I want, 
And then I usually go in, copy all of that, transform that into a JSON file. So I have this recipes for algolia.json. Uh, and you can see it's just the ingredients, uh, duration, so on and so forth. Um, and then I realized, for example, here that it's including a recipe divider, which is not really what I want. So I could come in here um, in ingredients and making sure that only the ingredients of type recipe.ingredients are included. So I would execute query, iterate on that, and now. There we go. I don't see that anymore. Uh, so I'm just cleaning and pruning my data to only what is most interesting for my users, but also including the necessary meta metadata that I may need. Um, so yeah, from this, I usually go into my Algolia dashboard, upload records, upload file, and then I drop the JSON with that uh, preview data. Um, and then that allows me to search across it and also validates the size of my records. So in this case, it's only, uh, it's less than one kilobyte. So that's good. Uh, as long as we don't go over the threshold of two kilobytes, where the Algolia search starts getting really slow, uh, we are okay. So in this case, um, for example, I could search for um, Limau, which is lime without the, the proper accent, uh, and it's still working, so we're good. I could ser try searching for um, ingredients. So it's also showing up and I can take a look at the status number and uh, that's also good. And yeah, so uh, just to come back to the status number, I would go into uh, ranking and sorting and let me delete that. Uh, I would add status number here and then make sure it's descending. So. First, we rank entries by text and only then by the their status number. So it's a, treat this as a tiebreaker. All right, so with this, I usually like to test the automatic indexing as well. So I will come in here and go manage index clear. And then this is going to remove every record that I had. And then I come back here and let's start indexing this through code. So I am going to create a serverless function. In this case, I'm using SvelteKit. So I already have set up the routes, API, search, and then index all. Here, I am importing my Algolia search uh, module and creating an instance of it using my application ID and the admin key which you can get in your Algolia dashboard. I also have my Sanity server client, which is just a, an instance of my Sanity client that is authenticated with a token because all of this is going to run in the server and my data set is private, so I do need that. Um, then I have the query, which I change a little bit, so I should probably change it here. And uh, then the function is quite simple actually. So we get every recipe from this query. Uh, then we create an index um, with the Algolia instance based on our specific index that we are using. So in that case, it's production. Um, then we are going to await index.save objects, which takes in an array um, and then returns, well, it, it's going to throw or not depending on uh, whether or not it works, then depending on that, we return a 200 or a 500. So I'm going to start my dev process. If we run this, so let's go into API search index all, we get back success, meaning if I take a look here, saving five documents to index. So it did work. Um, and then I should probably come in here going to browse, then refresh. And there we go. I can see I got all the data exactly as when I uploaded the menu of JSON. So I can search and there you go. Um, so this is the first step, indexing everything in one single batch. But then the second step is what I showed in the diagram, which is uh, dealing with webhooks. Thankfully, we have the Sanity Algolia package that makes this 
significantly simpler to do. So I'm going to npm install Sentinel Algolia, which I already have. And implement something and implement something like this. So I created a new webhook or API search webhook endpoint. Uh, instead of a get endpoint, this is a post because Sender is going to send a post request uh, in their. Um, webhooks. And then I do the same thing. So I get the Algolia instance and I need the index. And I configure the Sanity Algolia uh, indexer. Basically, what it takes is a bunch of document types that take in an index, which is the one the Algolia index, and a projection. This projection I extracted out from the query you already had. Uh, so it's we have the type review object ID, so on and so forth. Uh, then it takes a serializer, which is very useful when you have multiple document types. In the, this case, I don't. So it's just, I get the document from the projection, I return the document. that's it. Uh, and then the visibility function, which is, should I add this to Algolia or not? Or if it's already in Algolia and it shouldn't be added, then delete it. Uh, where I take in and just make sure the document status is not one of the non-approved ones. Then finally, we return uh, Sanity Algolia dot webhook sync, which takes the Sanity client and then the request body, which uh, as we're going to see here, uh, it expects the webhook body of a Sanity. Well, it expects the body of a Sanity webhook, which has IDs and then created, updated and deleted, which we're going to use in a second. Uh, so yeah, then uh, if it works, we return 200, otherwise 500, and that's it. If I try running this with whatever, uh, it's going to error out because um, Sanity Algolia is going to try to find IDs and it's not going to find it. Um, so here's what I usually like doing before publishing the webhooks live or this endpoint. I like going to one of my... Um, documents that it is already published in Algolia and then changing something that I'm gonna see. So yeah, let's just put an emoji here then publish this document. And now I'm gonna get this ID of it, which is the same as if I were going to inspect and then copy this ID. Um, and now I'm going into Insomnia and now I'm gonna do IDs and then I'm gonna do updated uh, which is an array like this, and then well, something similar for created and deleted, but those should be empty. Now, if I try running this, I should get success. Now, if I go back to Algolia and I refresh the index, I should see my new updated title. So this means this webhook is going to work in the live production environment. Uh, which is a nice little trick you can use. Um, and the same could be true for when we want to delete a specific uh, document. So let's do the same thing here. But instead of updated, we're going to do deleted. And so we can come back here, refresh the index once more, and then it's gone. Now we only have four hits instead of five. So I'm just going to come back and do one less, which is creating a document. And now in Algolia, I'm expecting to see this grow to five hits once the index updates. There you go. I would also check to see if the webhook result has the same properties as a regular one. So we have main image ref, status, status number, uh, tags, categories, uh, ingredients. Yeah, so it's, it's good to go. Now that we know that webhooks are being handled correctly by our function, uh, which we tested locally, we need to configure Sanity to send these webhooks to our uh, live endpoint. So I've logged into Sanity Manage and I'll click in the API tab 
and now create a new webhook, a grok powered webhook. I'll give a descriptive name for it. So let's say Algolia sync. Algolia sync. That's good. Um, I don't need the description for it, but if you have a team that, that could be interesting explaining how this works, maybe pointing to this video, something that you can use um, as a reference later. Then the URL, I'm not going to put mine here because that includes a secret. So for now, I'm just going to include um, an example one. Uh, the data sets you want to trigger that on. In this case, I want you to do production. I want you to trigger it on create, update, and delete. And finally, I want to assign a filter and a projection. As my search is solely for the type of recipe, I'm going to do type equals recipe here. Um, the reason being, this just saves us some bandwidth, some invocations. Um, so it's just generally a good practice not to fire at every moment. And if you have, say, like multiple types, which I guess we could do here. So if type is in either recipe or recipe in this case, but say, you know, any category, there you go. And finally, for the projection, I'll just recommend copy and pasting what I have here, which is basically saying uh, which IDs of documents were updated, created, or deleted. And it's a select function where uh, if it's update, then we include the current ID for the updated uh, property. Otherwise, uh, we just return an empty array. I have this configuration set up for you in a URL that I'm going to put below this video, and you can take a look at that. Um, and advanced settings, we don't need to change anything. We're good with post methods, API version 2021.03.25. Uh, no secrets and no drafts. You could use these circuit secrets. I believe they would show up in the header of the request, but I'm using that uh, directly in query strings. So I'm going to save this. And there you go. Now this should be working. Let's review what we've done. So we tackled both approaches of manually indexing everything as well as uh, updating, deleting, and creating new data uh, with a webhook. We started by creating the Grok query that we would use for our, uh, our recipes in this case, uh, and that gets exactly the data that we need in Algolia. Then we went and moved over into the index all function that takes in an Algolia instance and uh, indexes or saves, saves every single object from the recipes or sanity documents that we got. And then finally, we dealt with a webhook, um, which takes in the request body from sanity and passes it over into sanity Algolia, which does a webhook sync uh, for us. It uh, takes in a configuration where we define the document type, uh, which Algolia index you use, in which uh, Grok projection to fetch the document. We could do some custom serializing or changing the data in the document. And finally, um, we can check whether or not the document should be included uh, by checking its, um, its values with the visibility function. Then we made sure it was working with local API calls where we pass in a real ID of a document to try and see if it was actually deleted in Algolia, if it was updated, and then finally, uh, if it was created. We made sure all of that was all right. So then we only need now to go in and deploy this into Sanity. So uh, 